Hi, my name is Christopher Burley and I'm the Technology Training Specialist here at Foothill Community College. Here I'm going to give you an orientation to Etudes for students. Now I'm going to log into Etudes right now, but if you don't have your username and password, you can check out our other video on login instructions. So let's go ahead and type in our username and password. And click the login button. So I'm going to go over a few things here. First I'm going to go over an overview of the Etudes interface. Next I'll do an explanation of the My Workspace areas. And third I'll set up common Etudes preferences. So let's get started. So at the top of the interface we have the course navigation. Now this includes any course tabs that you may have and links to sites that you're enrolled in. On the left hand side we have the tools navigation. This includes many of the tools inside the courses and your My Workspace. And third in the middle we have the main content area. Now this is where a majority of the material for your course is going to exist. So let's get started with the My Workspace area. Here we have a few tabs on the left hand side. The schedule area is an area that allows you to see an aggregated schedule of the different courses. Now this tool isn't as useful as it used to be because many instructors are no longer using the schedule in Etudes. However, you can look at things by week, you can look at them by month, and you can view a really rich schedule by clicking around here on the different sets of options. If you need to add something yourself, go ahead and just click this add link and you can add in your own event and in your calendar and it will show up and you can see it whenever you need to. The resources you can think of is your own personal online storage. Now in here I just have a few resources under my My Workspace Resources folder. If you're interested in adding anything additionally to the resources, simply click this Add link right here. Once you click that, you'll be asked to choose which type of item type the resource you're trying to upload is. Most of the time I select File Upload, or if I'm trying to store a URL, I'll click URL. Notice the form changes depending on which file type you, ch you choose. Once you choose a file type, you simply just select the resource from your hard drive. I'm going to upload this screenshot. Click open. It automatically enters in a tiled for which you can amend. Here's my screenshot. You can enter in description if you want. And then you want to choose whether you want this to be accessible by the public or just accessible to yourself. I usually choose public because most of my materials are not uh, copyright protected nor do I need them to be. Go ahead and click add and that resource will upload to the Etude servers and be stored here for you for later use. Now the great option for this is to store files that maybe you're working on. Maybe you're at a friend's house and you decide to upload uh, an essay that you're working on in the middle here and then download it when you get back to your house. This is a great file storage area um, beyond the traditional sources like email. The announcement section is an aggregate of all the different announcements from your courses. Now currently I'm only enrolled in one course here. You can see it at the top. And so under the site you'll see this course multiple listings. I have two announcements in that course but other than that you're not going to see anything else. If you have multiple courses that you're enrolled in then you'll see additional announcements here from the different courses and the names. All you have to do is simply click on this link here under the subject column to access that announcement directly. This helps you quickly preview the latest information coming from your course and get oriented as to what's next. Now we're going to get into setting up common preferences for Etudes. The preferences area underneath my workspace has four areas, notifications, tab customization, time zone, and language. First, the notifications area will let you, let you determine how often you'll be contacted by Etudes for the different changes within the system. Changes related to the announcements, resources, or the syllabus. I recommend for all students to keep their settings at the highest level this first. Send me each notification separately in the beginning. And if you determine that you're getting more notifications from Etudes than you prefer, you can come into this preferences section and dial them back a bit to send me one email per day summarizing all the low priority announcements or don't send me any low priority announcements in order to reduce the amount of email coming into your system. The next area we'll go over is the tab customization. This is valuable as you have more courses add up along the top here in the course navigation area. Eventually you will decide that you don't want courses to show up there that are from previous quarters or semesters. 
simply come into this Customize Tabs area and you'll see two boxes. One that says Sites Not Visible in Tabs and another area that says Sites Visible in Tabs. Now right now my course FH Education 201 is showing up in the tabs. It is visible. If I simply click on it and click this left arrow it'll move it into the Not Visible box. Then I have to click Update Preferences. Now you'll see when I go back to Home that this course disappears from my top course navigation. Back to Preferences. The time zone area is for you if you decide to move to another area of the country. Currently it is set at Pacific Time in Los Angeles, but you can change it to another time zone and it will correctly reflect in the tests and exams and the announcements and other date-oriented pieces of information and etudes. The language area is a place where you can decide which language will show up as the primary language in etudes. Now this doesn't change any of the language that your course materials are in, uh, as that would require your instructor to be translating into those particular languages, but it does change common buttons and titles and that nature into the preferred language. Simply click the language you, pr you prefer and click update in order to make those changes. Finally, we'll adjust some of the account settings in etudes. If you click Modify Details button at the bottom, you'll see that your name, first, and last can be edited, as well as your email and your password. This is a great place to go in order to change your password for etudes from the default password of being your birth month and birth date, the four number combination. When you come in here, simply enter, enter in a new password in both boxes and click Update Details. Now that I've updated my password, I want to make sure I write that down and then next time I log in, I'll use that password. You can also change your email in this area. It is important that you put in an email that you check regularly as most instructors will ask you to be checking your email on a daily basis in order to receive contact from them or contact from the course. If you have an email in here that you don't tend to check very often, I recommend, I highly recommend that you change this to an email that you check regularly. That's it for why, why workspaces. Let's move on to the course. Now that we're in the course site, I'm going to review a few of the main areas. Now let's not forget that still along the top area is the course navigation, and along the left side, hand side is the tools navigation, and then in the center area to the right a bit is the main content area. First we're going to do an overview of the course home screen, then I'll do an explanation of the core etudes tools including the syllabus tool, the announcements tool, the modules tool, the assignments, tests, and surveys tool, and the discussion and private messages tool. So let's get started. The home screen includes usually an image, a video, or a web page in the upper left hand corner of the main content area. On the right hand side of the main content there is usually an aggregation of the recent announcements. So check here to get the latest news and updates about your course. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see recent discussion and private messages area. This is where you will get private messages and or emails in your course. And you'll get the new posts, information about the new posts that are happening in the discussion boards. And then down at the bottom, you'll see recent chat messages if the chat room is enabled in your course. Feel free to click on any of these links that exist in order to jump right to that particular announcement. Let's get started with the core etudes tools in the left hand tools navigation area. Starting with announcements, let's click on the announcements tab in the left hand side. At any point in time in this video, feel free to pause, rewind, try this out in your own course. It doesn't hurt to review the material in order to get it just right. In this announcements area, we have this class syllabus and we have a welcome message. I'm going to go ahead and click on the welcome message to see what our instructor has written. Looks like we have a welcome message here from the instructor and if I'm done reading this I can click return to list button in order to go back to the listing of announcements. Next I want to check out this class syllabus announcement and see what's in here. Looks like there's an overview of the syllabus and if I scroll down to the bottom <clears throat> I can see a syllabus attachment. This is one area where you may find a syllabus in your course in addition to the syllabus tool on the left hand side. Feel free to check back in the announcements area frequently as this is where updates and new information from your instructor is going to show up. Moving on to the syllabus tool, this is an example of a standard syllabus that I've copied from the internet. This isn't exactly what your syllabus may look like. You may also have a file attached here, but do know that when you click on syllabus, it'll give you the, the contract that you have between you and your instructor. Feel free to review your syllabus and look at all the different details and information. It's really important that you go over this and understand it before beginning your course. 
The next tool that we'll go over is the modules tool. As you'll notice, the modules has several different module areas and then sections underneath each module. You'll notice inside this tool that there's a start date, an end date, and then a view date for the materials that are available. Also notice this green check mark. That signifies that I've completed this section, or at least that I've gone through and looked at the different areas, but not necessarily read them. I'm going to click on the introduction to show you what it looks like inside one of these modules. This is a sample introduction for a course, and it shows below the two different sections, Welcome and Syllabus. I'm going to click in here in order to access those. Now that we're inside this section, we can also click the Next and Previous buttons to go forward or back within that module. I'm going to click Next to go on to the Syllabus area. Again, here's another example of the syllabus being attached inside the modules. This example is from Carolyn Brown, the teacher here at Foothill College. If I want to go back, I can click on the Table of Contents button. Notice that we have a Unit 1 available, but Unit 2 is not available yet. <clears throat> this is because the open date is not for a few days, and so therefore it says not open yet. When it is open, these links will be activated, and you'll be able to click into that module and review the different sections. Here is an example of another section within the Atools module. Clicking Next takes me to the next section. I'll click Next again. We'll see a few different areas. Within the modules area, many of your teachers will put main material, the link to the main resources, essentially an online book relating to your course. Now some of your instructors will have different types of materials, maybe videos, images, but all of them will put a lot of the main content in the module section. Please be aware of the different dates within the modules, as this will allow you to know when this module begins and when it ends. If you're interested in saving a particular module, you can always go ahead and click on this print icon, open the module up, and then send it to a printer. This will allow you to either print it out, or if you're like me, you can save it to your hard drive by saving it as a PDF. On a Mac, simply click on the PDF button and click Save as PDF. It'll ask you to name the file, Lesson 1, and then you click the Save icon down here. Once it's saved, you can close this pop-up window and go back to your modules. Going into the Assignments, Tests, and Surveys tool, we'll find out the main area where assessment, quizzes, exams, midterms are held. Notice when you go into the Assignments, Tests, and Surveys tool that all of your assessments are listed by their due date chronologically. So Unit 1 exam is due January 16th, the second is January 23rd, and the third quiz is due January 30th. These are all about a week apart. Also notice the different information available on this page, such as the status of the quiz. If it's ready to begin, it'll actually show this, and you'll have a link so that you can click inside the quiz and start it. If it's not yet available or hasn't opened, you'll see this not yet open wordage. Also notice the time limit. This is a crucial aspect within Etudes, because the time limit allows you to only take a quiz for a certain duration of time. If you see 30 minutes, or 60 minutes, or 2 hours, or 4 hours here, note that down, because as soon as you click Ready to Begin, and you begin that quiz, the ticker begins to tick. You can't log into Etudes, take the quiz for 5 minutes, then log out for a few days, and log back in and take it for the other 55 minutes of the hour-long test. It begins as soon as you hit begin, and it ends 60 minutes or whatever the duration is later. Also note the tries column. It'll tell you if there's only one try or if you have multiple tries. Let's get started with one of these quizzes and experience the different question types so that you're familiar with those. I'm going to click the begin link. This is just a sample quiz, and it's going to demonstrate the different types of questions available in Etudes. Many of you will find that these are familiar. Uh, but I wanted to go over them anyway so that you could get used to the different testing mechanisms within Etudes. Clicking I agree at the bottom allows you to accept the honor pledge and move forward. Next, let's click begin and this quiz will start. Anyone have an idea what the answer to this particular question is? It says, which color of eyes is the most common worldwide? Brown, gray, blue, or green? I'm going to go with blue, but I'm a little biased. Clicking Next will submit my answer and move me on to the next question. If I'd like to continue later, I can click this button. If I'd like to finish right now, I can click Finish, but let's not do that because we're only on question one of seven. 
Notice that the point value shows up for each question. This particular question is worth 10 points. Clicking next. True or false, like humans, whale, whales breathe air. I'm going to say true. Next question type. This is an example of an essay question. Now I've included this here because many of you will have essays or essay type questions within your course. Many of your instructors will have the question here and then they'll ask you to paste your answer into this large white box. Notice that there's two areas in which you can answer the question. Here's a, an inline box where you can type in your epic essay. Or down below there's a click click to browse and upload your file area. Now this is where you would attach a file that you have previously written on your hard drive. I highly, highly recommend that anything of any length that you're composing for an online course, you compose in an offline program such as Microsoft Word, and then you copy that text into this particular box or you attach that file. Let's click browse and upload a, a file on our hard drive. I have this lesson one PDF that I saved earlier in the demonstration. Let's just upload that and pretend as if it's my first essay. Do note that within this you have to click the upload button. It will then attach your file to this question and then you can click next in order to submit that answer. We're going to go ahead and click next now and move on to the next question. This is an example of a fill in the blank. Does anyone know what could be a car or a snake? I'm going to go with Cobra. Many of you may have been thinking Viper. All right, next we'll move us on to the... Okay, question five. Match the colors below with this type of fruit. This is a matching question example. So you may have a bunch of choices on the right and then words on the left. And you have to match. A lime is, is it purple? No, I'm going to guess green. C. Grapes and plums are definitely purple. And a tomato... Well, I think it's red, actually, although it could be green. Banana, let's go with yellow. Click, click next, we'll move us on to question number six. This is a Likert scale question. Any of you who have ever taken a survey before will find this look to be very familiar. It asks you a question, and then you choose whether you strongly agree or disagree. I'm going to go ahead and disagree with this question. Clicking next. Here's a final example of a question type. This is a task question type. So this is an area where an instructor could give you any particular task, then give you this box in order to enter in your answer. Again, compose your answer offline, if at all possible, in order to prevent potential errors that may occur when submitting your question. You never know when your internet connection is going to run out or when the server may not respond, and you may lose all your answers. At the bottom now, we, you see we don't have a next. We have a continue later and a finish. I feel comfortable with these answers, so I'm going to click finish and submit this. The system then asks me if I'm completely done with my test, then I click finish again. The system will then go through and grade any questions that it knows how to grade, and it will leave the rest for your instructor. Now if your instructor has made the review available, you'll notice a button here that says review. Many instructors don't make the review available until after the actual qu quiz is finished. Therefore you may not always see a review button, but check in after the due date and you may see a review button then when the instructor has graded them. Let's go ahead and review this just so that we can see what the correct answers were. So number one, I chose blue as the answer and it looks like brown eyes are the most common worldwide. And yes, whales do breathe air. Question three was not graded because it's an essay and the computer isn't that smart. The teacher will have to come in and grade that one. Question four I got wrong. A cobra is a car or a snake. But look here, the teacher only put in a viper or capital V IPER as potential answers. Do note that when you're doing a fill in the blank that you should try to spell things as traditionally as possible because the instructor needs to put in multiple permutations in order to allow for variations in spelling, which they may or may not do. For question five, the matching, looks like we got all those right. Question six was just a survey question, so there is no right or wrong. And then question seven is a task, so that needs to be graded separately. Clicking return will bring us back to the main assignments, tests, and surveys tool area. That's about it for assignments, tests, and surveys. The discussions tool is another one of the main tools. Let's go ahead and click discussions and private messages in order to access this tool. I'll go over a few things in the beginning to get you oriented. 
At the top is a link called Discussion Home. This will bring you back to this main screen every time. Search will allow you to search all the different discussion messages. Recent topics will show you posts from other members within the discussion board that are relatively recent. Member listening will show you all the different members in the course. My profile will allow you to adjust your profile settings. Bookmarks will allow you to show the different bookmarks that you've made within threads that are important to you. Private messages is like the email system within Etude. This is where you can send messages to your instructor or to other colleagues. Mark all as read is an invaluable feature. When you come into discussion and you feel like you've read enough, you can click the mark all as read and it will turn every single thread to these white icons here. Notice that this white icon says no new messages. This is valuable because the previous time that you logged in, there may have been changes after that until now. And you can see those changes by looking at the different threads that have an orange message in them. Once you feel like you've covered those messages, go ahead and click mark all as read and it will change everything to white. So then the next time you only see messages that have recently changed. Let's go ahead and check out the member listing. There's only a few people in this course, as it's just a demonstration course, but in your course you may have 30, 50, 150 different members. Let's go ahead and check out the private messages area. This is again your email inbox within Etudes, and only for this particular course. I have one message that says I need help, looks like from another member in the course. If I wanted to send a message to my instructor right now, all I would do is click this new PM button. This would then bring up a list of the different users, including the instructor, in the course. I can select one of these users, enter in a subject, testing this messaging system, enter a body of this message, here is the body of my message. Then I'll scroll down and click submit. Notice that it gives me a message saying it was successfully sent. I can click here on the discussion list to go back to the main area of discussion and private messages. So for those of you who want to post, all you have to do is click on one of these forum areas. I'm going to click on Class Discussions 1. Within Class Discussions 1, there's just one single topic available to me. It says Unit 1 Discussion, Implications of War. If I click on this title, it'll go into this particular topic. I've noticed here that the instructor has posted a question and I need to respond. So there's two ways to do that. I can go ahead and click the post reply to create a general response. Or if I'm interested in particularly responding to one area of their question, let's say part, th part three or part one of their question, I can go ahead and click this quote icon. Let me do that and show you that example. Clicking quote at the top right of their messages brings up a response dialog. Within this, there's a box. Notice that these tags that say quote equals Chris Burley are surrounding the original message. This will tell the server that that was the original message and that your message is going to be a response to that. But if I only want to respond to one particular area of this, let's say this just this question part, I would select and delete anything but that while not selecting and deleting those tags that say quote and end quote. I'm coming in here and I'm just carving out some of those words. Then I go to the bottom, hit the enter key a few times and say here is my response. Feel free to put your name or not to. You can include in the signature in your profile which will always have your name and potentially other information like a quote if you choose. Clicking submit will send your message to the server. If you're interested in attaching files to this, all you have to do is click the Attach Files button. It'll then pop open a dialog below. You can choose a file from your computer, give it a description, and then again, click Submit to move forward. Let's try that. Browse. Again, I'm going to attach our favorite Lesson1.pdf. Click the Open button. In the description I'll put, this is a PDF of Lesson 1. If I wanted to add another file, I would just click this button, but for now, I just want to use this file. Clicking Submit will attach my file, and it will sub submit my message. Notice in my response to the instructor that their area is highlighted. Part of their message that I wanted to highlight is exactly highlighted, and then my response is below it. In addition, my file is attached at the bottom of my message. It says Lesson1.pdf, and it gives the option for individuals to download. 
If I wanted to post a general reply to the entire group, all I would do is click the post reply button, which is located at the top of each discussion topic or at the bottom of each discussion topic here. I'm going to go ahead and click post reply. I'm going to type another epic response to this thread and click submit. I could click preview to see what it looks like first but these are pretty simple responses so I'm just going to click submit. If you wanted to post just a really quick general reply there's a quick reply button. Notice how it pops up a quick dialogue you can say hey this is my quick reply. Click submit and move on. That posts just to the bottom of the, of the thread and it's not able to have any contacts or any quoting of anyone else, just a quick reply. If you are interested in bookmarking this thread in order to come back to it later by accessing it through the My Bookmarks area, just click the Bookmark It button at the top. It will ask you to give it a title and a description. You can click Update and it will tell you the bookmark is saved. You can also watch this thread if you are interested or mark it as unread if you wanted to come back to it later and check it again. Let's go back to the discussions home. Here's a listing of the different topics. Notice now that I have one topic, there's four messages. It was three messages before, but because I posted a few messages, it's increased. If I was interested in uh, changing my profile picture, all I'd have to do is to go into the My Profile area. Let's scroll down. Notice that it has an option area for Facebook, Twitter, website, the location you're at, the occupation, your interest, and signature. This is the area where you would put a message or a favorite quote if you were interested in, and this would show up below every single posting of yours. Notice also the preferences area where you can choose how many emails you get, if you're allowed to use HTML, if private messages can be sent through email, etc., etc. Down at the bottom is where you upload your picture. It says Avatar Control Panel. No, this is not where you were going to make the movie Avatar. We're just going to upload a picture. All you have to do is click Browse. Ignore the dialog that says it's limited to 130 by 130 pixels. You can put any image in here and it will constrain the size to the appropriate for this discussion board. I put in a new image. I'm going to click Submit. Notice it says at the top, Information Updated. And now I have a new image, a new avatar. We're going to go back to the discussion home. Finally, do know that these images at the bottom will tell you exactly what the different icons mean within the discussions private and private messages tool. This little orange icon next to discussion topics will say that there's new messages there. If it's white, there are no new messages. If it looks like a little lock next to it, that means that it's read only or it's locked until later. Pay attention to those icons as they may help, help relieve some of the confusion within discussions and private messages. And that wraps it up for discussions and private messages tool. The final areas within Etudes are pretty straightforward. We have a tool on the left called the chat room. Now this is similar to many chat rooms you've seen online. Notice that I don't see anything here right now. However, the time limit is set to only the past three days. If I click all messages, we'll actually see a bit of a dialogue in here from between people. I can then go in here and type and add another message. Hey, it's me. Maya Angelou. Wondering if anyone wants to chat. Now many instructors don't utilize the chat room, so if it's not enabled in your course, don't panic. Moving on, the resources section is a section which will allow your instructor to store different course resources for you. Notice this icon has a kind of an open folder look right next to the course title, and then the icon below it looks like a closed folder. I need to click on this in order to open up that folder and see the different resources. Here we have a lesson one, an additional reading document. We also have a PowerPoint for lesson one, and then we also have the syllabus. Make sure to check the resources section within your course frequently in order to see if any different resources have been updated by your instructor. It's a great place for your instructor to store different files that you need throughout your course to be successful. The next tool is the gradebook tool. This is the best place to get feedback as to how you're doing in the course. I haven't graded any assignments in this course, so you're not going to see any points. However, on the right hand column it says points available, and on the left would be your score. Check after you've finished a particular quiz due date to see if your score has been updated. If you see any discrepancies, don't be afraid to send your instructor a private message. 
The final tool is what's called a web content tool. Now this can link to anything in your course. So if you see something, it may describe Google, it may describe something else, but essentially it's a link to an external website that's embedded inside Etudes. I'll click on this to give you an example. The last area of the Etudes course is the site info. This will display your instructor's name and email and a few other bits of information about your course. That's about it for this Etudes orientation. If you have any additional questions, please check out our other videos as well as the frequently asked questions. Thanks and have a wonderful day.